Hello, in this video we're going to show you how to set up SFML on Windows using Visual Studio. If you're interested in doing it on Xcode on a Mac, feel free to check out that video. So first of all, you want to make sure you just go onto a web browser. You want to download Visual Studio. If you already have it, fantastic. If not, just Google Visual Studio. Go to visualstudio.com, scroll all the way that down. Go to free download and for this it'll just download Visual Studio which I've already got so I'm not going to download it just install it it's a simple process once you've done that fantastic next Google SFML or directly go to sfml-dev.org go to download go to the latest version and select either 32-bit or 64-bit I would recommend always choosing 32-bit unless you specifically need 64-bit for something like having, you know, utilizing more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. Chances are you won't. Select whatever Visual Studio version you have. I've got 2015, so I've downloaded this one. I've already got it downloaded. Once you've got that downloaded, I would extract it and put it in a folder that you designate as a development directory. What I mean by that is, a folder where you can put all your development files there and you won't be renaming it or moving it. Recommended that you don't put it in the downloads folder. I know some people do. You don't want to do that. I've got a folder on my local disk called development. I don't have it there yet, but I actually have it in my OpenGL folder. So I'm going to copy it from here, put it into the development folder, and now just let this paste over. And this folder will be referred to by every single SFML project that we create. And that way we don't have to have multiple instances of SFML. Also, when we update SFML, because there's a new version out, a new fantastic version with new epic features, we can just simply replace the contents of this SFML folder. And this is what the contents should look like. Once you've done that, we are now ready to start creating our project. Launch Visual Studio. Again, I'm using 2015. If you're using 2012 or 2013, that's fine. Just go to New Project. Select Visual C++, Win32, Win32 Console Application. I'm going to name mine SFML Tutorial. Save it on the desktop. That's where I'm saving it. You can save it wherever you want to. Click OK. Click next, click console application, select empty project, deselect security development lifecycle, click finish. And now this is just going to set up Visual Studio and create our project. Once that's done, right click your project, click new item under add, and we're just going to add a main.cpp, which will be the main entry point of our application. And now what we want to do is just configure our project to link with SFML. So to do that, right click your project, go to properties, make sure all configurations is selected, go to platform. If you downloaded the 64-bit version, then select 64-bit. If you downloaded 32-bit version, select 32-bit. For me, it's 32-bit. Go to C, C++, general. If this doesn't appear, this section, chances are you haven't created a CPP file. That's the main reason we created it first, but didn't put any code in there. So make sure you've created a CPP file so it tells Visual Studio what type of project it is. Then go to Additional Include Directories. Click New, and the three dots to open up our file explorer. And now you wanna go to where you created a development directory. I'm going to go to SFML, include, select folder, click OK. Now go to linker, go to general, go to additional, include directories, drop down, edit, click the new button, three dots. And now you want to go to your development directory again. You want to go to SFML, you want to go to lib, click select folder, click OK. Now you just need to go to input within linker, go to additional dependencies, click edit. Here you need to add the library files that you'll be using. So SFML-graphics 
dot lib sfml dash window dot lib sfml dash system dot lib if you start using other stuff like networking later on you just need to add the appropriate library it'll be something like sfml dash networking if you've got any questions feel free to ask and we will help click ok click apply click ok again there's one final step before we can actually start coding and that is to copy over the dynamic link library from your sfml folder so go to sfml bin you want to copy the graphics dash two, the system dash two, and window dash two. The dash D is just the debug version. If you selected the dash D dot lib in your Visual Studio project, just copy these over. So I want graphics, system, and window. Copy that. Go to wherever your project was created. Mine was on the desktop. Go to the folder that contains your CPP file. Paste it here. And now we are actually ready to start coding our application. So what I'm going to do is just close this down and yeah, let's start coding. Well, so first of all, let's do hash include SFML graphics.hpp actually we can do it this way, sfml graphics.hpp. We need to do hash include io stream. And now we're going to do a hash define, which is going to be a screen underscore width, which is going to be 1024. And hash define screen underscore height. And for the, um, yeah, that, that zoom level is a little better, 1024. And I think you've guessed the screen width and screen height will be the width and the height of our window that pops up. So now we're going to create the main entry point into our application, which is int main. First, you need to do sf render window. SF is just the SFML namespace, so we're accessing something within the SFML namespace by doing SF colon colon. You could do using namespace SF, but I like to do SF colon colon. Now we're going to create a window. This is what will appear. This is what will be what the user will see, and this is where we will render our objects, our game objects that will well form our game. Next we need to actually provide some parameters first of all we need to specify the video mode so sf video mode and for this we just need to specify the screen width and the screen height you might be wondering why can't we just put the value directly in here you can that's fine but if we need to use the screen width and screen height later on by having them in a separate location, such as a hash defined, it just makes our project more dynamic. Now there's a comma, and now we simply specify the name of our application, which will appear sort of you know, at the top here. And I'm gonna say awesome game. Now we need to create a while loop, which will run while our window is open. So to do that, you just put while, window dot is open so while it's open we want to run our application so first of all we're going to create a event so this will handle events such as input and let's say if we try and close our application that's an event so we need to handle that because we don't want it just to sort of not be closable we're going to do while window dot poll event so while we're polling the event on the event object that we've just created we would actually now handle the different types of events so we would do a switch statement event dot type so we're going to check what event has occurred the event we're concerned with at the moment is sf 
event closed. So if the user is trying to close the application, we simply want to do, we have to get rid of these, simply want to do window.close and we want to do break. Now, outside of the window poll while loop, but it's still within the window is open while loop, we need to do window dot clear. So this is going to clear the screen every single frame. And then this would contain all the objects to draw. And then we would just do window dot display. So there you go. We have SFML set up. We are ready to run. So if we just run our application, we'll compile it, and we should see a window. So now we have our render window. You might be thinking, it doesn't look very impressive, and I totally agree. It doesn't look very impressive at all. At the moment, we haven't actually implemented any sort of game objects, any sort of game logic, and we'll be doing that in later videos. Like I said, if you're interested in Xcode, feel free to check out that tutorial. Also, what we will be doing is creating a game engine. So those videos will be coming next and then it will be the game logic. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link available to that. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.